Hello and welcome to Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. I am your host, Raya Salter. I'm an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. I'm also the principal attorney of Imagine Power, LLC. Got some exciting stuff today. Uh, we always say here on the show that it's important to engage all stakeholders in the energy conversation, including those who may not be traditionally engaged in energy policy. I think this prominently includes our communicators, reporters, and storytellers, as it's they who keep us, the public, informed, engaged, and educated about arts, culture, news, and current events. So it's not often these days that you come across a print magazine that just blows you away with its beauty, style, and content. But that is what happened to me when I came across this month's edition of Summit Magazine. Summit is Hawaii's global magazine with in-depth coverage of arts, design, style, business, civics, and literature in the Hawaiian hemisphere. Summit connects islanders and global travelers to the very best perspectives, purveyors, and products of the archipelago. I'm pleased to have with me here today E. Kaika Hussey, the publisher and editor of Summit Magazine, with us here in the studio today. So Ikaika resides in Kalihi and is a longtime leader in the community in a wide variety of areas. He's on the board of the Domestic Violence Action Center and the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action, just to name a few. Uh, Ikaika is a teacher, author, and thought leader with, in his words, the common goal of strengthening our island home. Ikaika earned a master's degree in political science from the University of Hawaii at Manoa and is currently studying economics via the University of London and the London School of Economics. So with all of that said, welcome Ikaika. Thank you, Raya. So, Summit Magazine, I think, is just it's just gorgeous. Um, I just, you know, I hadn't come across it before, um, and I was just so blown away by the, um, just the intriguing content, the, um, the beautiful pictures, the fashion and style, and yet still this really deeply intellectually engaging um, um, approach, um, global approach. Um, so I'm just so excited to have you here to, to talk a bit about the magazine. Thank you. But first, before we do, maybe you could tell me a little bit about yourself um, and your background and how you came to become a magazine publisher. Sure. Well, uh, I came to media from through a very unconventional path. I, I came to it as, as a person who had to oft, often talk to the media about uh, things that were happening in the grassroots community. And so I come out of sort of an organizer community um, Activism background. Fantastic. And what kind of what I'm hearing you, at, you know, of, engaging with the news. What what type of stuff were you? Uh, sure, a, a lot of things in the Native Hawaiian community: self determination, sovereignty, demilitarization, um, land rights, kind of basic human rights things. And it was often my my job um, within our various hui to to be the person who would go and talk to the press. I would write the press releases. I'd create the flyers and do that kind of thing. And what I realized was. Our press, our, our media have an incredibly important responsibility uh, and, and a lot of power and, and it could be used it could be used for incredibly wonderful things. Um, my, my concern is you know when I first started uh, Summon and the Hawaii Independent was was that oftentimes Native Hawaiians were treated sort of as the problem. you know it's like why are those guys why are those Hawaiians uh, protesting, and um, the fact that we were protesting was was the problem, as opposed to the issues that we were protesting about being the problem. So I wanted to to flip the lens a little bit and to speak from speak about the world from a Hawaiian perspective, instead of uh, having media that just covers Hawaiians. So I wanted to tell a very different kind of story than than what was available uh, in the in the media of, of the time. Wow, that, that is so interesting. It's sort of what I'm, I'm hearing you say is sort of the problem was speaking out. You yeah. know, if only they would be quiet. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing you say is and not talk about these things. And so you were like, let's go ahead and, and talk about these things authentically is what I'm hearing. Right. Shift who's speaking. You know? Shift who's speaking. And so um, a couple of years ago, I was thinking about a lot about how do we, 
Um, how do we create something that's really powerful and wonderful coming out of Hawaii? I wanted to speak to a more global audience um, from a, whole, very, a distinctly Hawaii and Hawaiian point of view. And it's always been rattling around in my, my mind, this, this quote from Queen Kapi'olani, who was the spouse of David Kalakaua, the last king of Hawaii. And it was during a time when Hawaii was very much a global place. Uh, it was much more cosmopolitan and had a very kind of modernist perspective and orientation, much more so than it than it did in the in the 20th century. Mm. Um, and her motto, Kapi'olani's motto, was "Kuli Ikanu," which means "Strive for the summit." You know, try to achieve the very best that we can as an island community. And I think that's a neat idea. Uh, and so my, my goal with, with this particular publication is to, to try to ex elevate expectations for what Hawaii can be in this 21st century, to showcase the amazing people who are doing great things in media like, like think tech or in fashion or in culinary arts, um, you know, show that we really have a lot to offer the world. And so that's about 60, 70% of the magazine. And the other 30, 40% is um, kind of straight up international politics and business. So we cover big ideas that are driving the world right now, like the idea of a universal basic, in, uh, basic income, which they're which contemplating. We'll talk some about later, right? so, which, is, which is so interesting, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> You know, no, I, well, I think it's interesting. I think folks um, watching will as well. So how, just I'm curious, so how did you go from, uh, you know, the, you know, writing the press releases to sort of, you know, having this, you know, international, you know, magazine? Well, you know, thankfully we live in a, in a time when um, a lot of the effort that it used to take to create a publication has been, um, mm. it's, it's a lot easier, you know. Mm. WordPress and and um, Amazon Web Services and all of the, the kind of readily available technology that the internet has offered to us. Um, I started doing websites when I was like 17 or 18 years old in high school, mm. and it was very much you know, tinkering around mm -hmm. with creating um, creating really simple websites. Uh, so I launched um, an online news website called the Hawaii Independent in. 2009. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, I can remember just because my daughter was born right as I launched it, and I have this crazy habit of starting businesses when kids are born. <laughs> it's a very bad idea. Uh, so, you know, it was relatively easy to get that off the ground just because the technology is, you know, you don't have to, we didn't have to print um, and hire trucks to deliver yeah. physical newspapers. And that makes sense, that yet at the same time, I think it must have also been, um, uh, you know, your work, just a knowledge and, and roots in the community, you must have known a lot of artists because you can have all the trucks to drive and, and fancy print things in the world and not have sort of photographs of, um, of the beauty that you have and, you know, the richness of content, so. Well, Summit is a very different an art piece. and a science, yeah. I mean, Summit really is a, is a team effort. Um, I, I play a, um, a, a, I would say, a pretty minimal role in the actual creation of this, this thing that you have in, in your hand or on the table. Uh, we have an excellent art director and an excellent, you know, managing editor who really make the magazine happen, um, and, and copy editors and writers who, who put you know, wonderful thought into their words. Um, I just help with, like, I literally drive the magazine around <laughs> and show it to people and try to set up the, the revenue so that it can keep going. Well, um, always in a very important function. Yeah. Who's, who's the audience for some men? Who's the audience? So we have, um, our core demo is sort of 35 to 45 year olds. So like, you know, me, <laughs> it's always easier to when you create something for someone that you, that you know well. Um, so I happen to be right in the middle of that, that demo. Uh, broadly speaking, we're sort of 35 and up, um, mass affluent. So not quite the one percent, but you know, people who um, are professionals, they're business owners, they're deeply engaged in the life in our civic life. Uh, they um, they may themselves have significant assets, uh, we, and we certainly have a lot of readers with with who are very affluent. Um, I feel like I want to be in this demographic. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and so th that's, you know, that's sort of the, the age and income distribution. And then geographically, we're writing for an audience that's here, mm. but also an international audience. So we have readers in Japan. We have readers, um, we have readers all throughout North America. 
uh, I have a subscriber in Slovenia that I need to send magazines to. And, you know, so that's where it, uh, it's ironic now that I'm printing a physical magazine because then we have to deal with the logistics of moving this, you know, 200 pages of, mm -hmm. of paper around the globe. Um, while trying, trying as best as we can to mitigate the carbon impact, which we should talk about. Of course, of course. Well, and that's, you know, that's sort of a, you know, always an issue in Hawaii of yeah, um, sure. shipping. Uh, shipping and, yeah. you know, absolutely, and wanting to, to you know, uh, cultivate interest in local things and having right. to somehow, right. still needing to, to, I'd like to think carbon impact notwithstanding, but, you know, com things coming from this direction <laughs> to the mainland, I mean, that we want to increase that, yeah. I would think, especially cultural and intellectual content. Sure. I mean, part of our, our orientation is that, um, is that this is our mainland. Like, this is, this is the center of our world. And so from this, this particular locus, uh, we can then speak um, about what's happening in Asia or North America, South America, from, from our perspective here in Hawaii. And it, you know, it's a very different way of thinking about the world. Um, on the other hand, I consume a lot of media that's produced, for instance, in New York City. Uh, and I'm always struck by how writers in New York City assume that everyone knows New York City. They talk about the geography of New York City as if it's um, the, the daily commute of everyone <laughs> in their listening audience. And it's not, of course. No, of course it's not. Uh, so I, I don't feel bad about insisting that our point of view should be from Hawaii. But um, and you know, at the least, it's, it's a very interesting way of, of seeing the world. It's, it's different, which is when you're creating a product nowadays, it's all about being different. It's about creating something that's differentiated from everything else that's out there. Oh, well, I, I, I would agree. That sounds like good advice to product creator. And so why don't we go ahead and talk a little bit about how the magazine's structured and, and why. So, you know, I know there, there may be some variation, but I know this, we have lifestyle, arts, industry, commons, teaching for tomorrow. So, you know, how you sort of put this together, I'm sure, you know, illuminates those perspectives. So sure. why did you decide to sort of break the magazine up in this way? Well, um, so the, the first section is called Anoe Nui, and Anoe Nui means rainbow in Hawaiian. And, you know, our, our magazine does not have a Hawaiian name, right? It's Summit. So I thought if we have one section in the magazine that has a Hawaiian name, that would be okay. Uh, and I figure, on balance, people around the world probably have seen the word Anoe Nui at some point. If they've come to Hawaii, uh, they probably see, you know, the people who are sports fans know that that's associated with our, our sports team at the university. So that's our lifestyle section, and we think of it as, um, as the place where you go for information about where to eat, where to, what to make with your um, alcohol collection at home. Rainbow. That's, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're about to take a break. Okay. And then when we come back, we'll talk more about the, the structure of the magazine, and we'll start digging into some of the content. So uh, we'll be right back with um, E. Kaika Hussey talking about Summit Magazine in just a bit. Aloha, this is Kili'i Akina with the weekly Ehana Kako. Let's work together program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. Movers and shakers and great ideas. Join us. We'll see you then. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is John Waihe, and I actually had a small part to do with what's happening today. Served actually in public office. But if you don't already know that, here's a chance to learn more about what's happening in our state by joining me for Talk Story with John Waihe every other Monday. Thank you, and I look forward to your seeing us in the future. Hi, and welcome back to Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to talk about a clean, renewable, and just energy future. We're here with Aikakahusi. I I um, 
of some publisher of Summit Magazine. And we were just talking about the, uh, the different sections of the magazine. And actually, uh, the, you can reach the magazine at www.summitzine.com. That's right. Correct? Um, so let's go ahead and uh, continue our discussion about the magazine. OK, so real briefly, the, um, the first section is Anu Anui, which is lifestyle. The second section is originals, which is art artists primarily, musicians, and it's mostly features on, on folks who create culture. Um, industry is the third section. Uh, I hope I'm getting the order right. Um, that's like business features. Um, commons is the fourth section, and that is uh, essentially international politics, uh, politics and social issues. And then letters is the final section, and that's, um, I think of it as sort of our New Yorker moment, where we uh, get to do poetry and prose. Uh, and then we also have a summit shop where we work with producers here, makers who are creating wonderful products, and we help to sell their products. Oh, well, that's that fantastic. Um, I just, again, I think it's really important to talk to folks who are purveyors of um, perspectives and cultures, because if energy policy folks don't sort of engage with the, you know, uh, the thought leaders and let, a, let you guys know that what you do is important to us, then, you know, how can we expect you to come to us and talk about how what you do is, uh, you know, about we do can be important to you? Mm. Of course, you know, in Hawaii, everyone knows you've got a 100% renewable energy goal. And I know there's a great piece this month that um, folks might be interested in about um, solar hot water heaters and the need to sort of think of them as being cooler and sexier than we may usually think about them because um, uh, they are a real solution and something that can be an answer um, in a way also for low to moderate income folks to participate in energy. So thank you for covering that. Sure. And it, I should mention that it's a, it's a piece that we did on Shifted Energy that's in partnership with, yes. with the Energy Accelerator, which is so really great actual, work yes. in really pushing the, um, you know, pushing innovation forward, which we desperately need. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I'd also like to talk about a couple of the other articles that I found to be just so fascinating. So one of them um, is called Mana for the People, and mm -hmm. it's sort of it's a historical look back at the um, Polynesian Panther yes. movement. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about that? First of all, sort of how did you come across this topic and why did you decide the, you know, to go ahead and bring that forth in Summit? Sure. So it's a story that was brought to us by one of our contributing writers uh, based in Australia. Um, and, you know, I'm, as, as a student myself of, of social movements, um, I've always been fascinated with how social movements are adapted and kind of spread all throughout the world. Um, so one of those, obviously, is the Black Panther movement. And so what we, what we found in, in New Zealand is, um, is a, a very local New Zealand Maori and pan-Polynesian um, effort to, to take some of the energy and language and sort of intellectualism of the Black Panther movement and turn it into a Polynesian movement in, um, in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, and I should mention, too, that there's you know, there were also uh, similar things happening here in Hawaii during the same time period where, you know, folks were, were following what was going on all, all around the world, you know, um, and, and building social movements that, um, that copied either the affect of, of things like the Black Panther movement and also a lot of the substance, a lot of the, a lot of the thinking behind, um, you know, what, what, uh, what was going on in, like, Oakland, for instance. Why do you think that that particular, um, I guess, black American and Caribbean cultural message resonated um, amongst um, folks in the, in the Pacific? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think you could make an argument, uh, and I'll just say it, I'll make the argument, that the black culture in North America and the Caribbean has, has really been the, uh, the most creative um, wellspring of culture for, for like our modern age. You know, if you look at um, all of the cool stuff that's come out of, come out of the United States, right? It's you have jazz, it's the blues, it's hip hop, it's rap. You know, it's it's all these things that have come out of out of um, black culture, and and to me, I find it very inspiring because it's really about um, a group of people who, you know, history should have could have written them off, you know? And that group of people taking things that were forced on them and then turning it into the, uh, the tools of their own liberation. It's really a beautiful, I'm sort of getting emotional. It's a very beautiful, uh, 
you know, his historical uh, trend that's happened. And it's a very beautiful thing. And um, I guess the, the seeds of that sort of wellspring, I mean, it, it's sort of the culture um, and also the, the social movements and the so, social activism and the stories of oppression, um, I guess, helped create this diaspora of, of, I, of resistance, right? I don't know what to call it, but there's something, was it the music, was it the Afros? <laughs> Something resonated, you know, and per, I think perhaps still resonates today. Something, you know, it, you know, when you look at the pictures, and I'm sorry I don't have them to share, you know, it's sort of a, it seemed like such a natural overlay. You know, you, you hear about this person, you know, in New Zealand picking up, um, you know, Huey Newton's work, right. and, you know, you know, wearing a beret, mm -hmm. putting on a jacket, and it just sort of, you know, that the overlay is almost kind of seamless. And, and what they decided to do in terms of um, helping young people with homework and, you know, having, you know, working with after school, like, was also very similar. It just, it seemed kind of seamless. I mean, I I'm think, trying to get at what kind of resonates. I mean, I think part of what's going on in that particular, um, in that particular episode that you're describing is, is that we all, you know, Everyone in sort of the English-speaking modern world, um, we all sort of live in one culture, right? And it's a culture that is broadcast out through Hollywood, and um, and and so everyone sort of shares in in what's happening through this mass English language culture. Um, and as a result of that, the cultural minorities, like even you know, in Hawaii, Native Hawaiians are are minority of sorts in Aotearoa, New Zealand even though they're, I don't know, some large percentage of the population, I don't know the exact number, but Maori are still treated as a minority in that community, in that, in that country. Um, what you have then is this situation where you have this kind of monolithic uh, English language culture, and within that monolithic culture, black culture is, is sort of the other, but it's a very powerful other. It's, it's an incredibly vibrant, and um, and powerful and creative uh, space where where liberation can take place, and so I think when that culture touches places like New Zealand or Hawaii, it becomes a place for all the folks who don't get to be, um, you know, the white man at the table. We all get to play within the black culture because it's so accepting, and we can all find a voice there. So if you look at in, in Hawaii, you have like the um, the, the movement, uh, I think of guys like um, John, uh, John Prime Hina, who's mm. leading the 808, you know, the 808 murals, um, Urban 808, excuse me, the Urban 808 group. And they're working with kids who are using sort of the, the visual language of hip hop, the visual language of, of street art, uh, of aerosol art, to, to tell their own stories. Because that is an available medium. You know, they can't find a space in the white dominated culture. So the black culture is actually a an accepting place. That's so interesting. And the and the article talks about how it, you know in this uh, Polynesian Panther movie uh, movement in the seventies, it began to become a um, a, a pan Polynesian, pan Pacific, you know, sort of diaspora, sort of a, a movement to unify the diaspora, mm -hmm. um, and reached out to you know movements in South Africa. Um, so. Um, Yes, I mean, in that we are all African in one regard or another originally. That's it. And I was going to ask, um, you know, I know. So you, this is in the current um, issue. So what, if and how do you think, you know, this topic is important today? Well, just off the top of my head, um, we live in incredibly interesting times. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah, we do. It's it's sort of amazing, unbelievable that. It's been a month, barely a month, since this new Trump era has taken place. Uh, but it's a, it's a time where so many social movements are in communication with each other mm -hmm, and are able mm -hmm, to find mm -hmm. support and love and solidarity with and each other. Dakota Access Pipeline, yeah, exactly. Hawaiian Sovereignty, right. Black Mount Lives Kea, Matter, BLM, exactly. You know, and you look at things like the, um, the, 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 women's, the Women's March yes, yes. on Inauguration Day, what was amazing about that for me was um, just how incredibly rich and multi-everything multi those marches were. 
so much more than like the official inaugural events and the sort of kind of monoculture that you see in, in those, in, those um, yeah. uh, in the Trump phenomenon. You know, what's happening with the people is the people are getting together and we need to celebrate that. All these movements, all these peoples, uh, that, that coalescing is, is an incredibly powerful historical trend that I don't think will ever stop. You know, it's, um, in some ways it's an unraveling of, of the way in which people have been divided since it's, over yeah. the last 500 years. I say it's so interesting. I feel like we could have a whole show about that, it, that in, in terms of what's coming together and what some of the some of the, the challenges and the fissures, some for very right. good reason. Well, and, we need to talk about energy, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> no, like that, what I wanted to get to, I, we could talk about that. We don't have a lot of time left, so what I really wanted to get to was this interesting article um, where you interviewed an economist who has an idea. Um, what is the, the name, of the actual name of the, the, the so idea? It's often described as universal basic income. Universal basic UBI. income. Yeah. So basically it's this concept that um, there can be a, a situation where everyone gets a base income, a right. base income, um, and what that what that means in terms of you know in terms of society and economic development, and particularly for the poor. So tell us a little bit about sure. why about this and why you chose to. So have we should probably this. call it universal basic income. Universal U basic UBI income. sounds like a disease. It's a, yeah. <laughs> it's something you get and you don't want to talk about. Y yeah. Uh, but so <laughs> the idea is that we're moving to an economy with less and less people. <laughs> Where you don't actually need people to do to a lot of do the creation, yeah. yeah, right. And so um, the idea is you create a, a tax regime that would that would uh, take all of the benefits of this increasingly humanless economy, and then share that benefit with the people, so that people can still get some. Uh, they still uh, get yeah. some value from that labor, sure, which exactly. and gosh, I this is my fault for lingering, but we're not going to have as much time to dig into All that right. fascinating theory as I had hoped we'll that we would. Time. But um, is uh, how can people find Summit Magazine? So Summit is on. Uh, we're in about 400 stores across the United States. So at most Barnes and Nobles, you can find a copy of Summit. You can also find us at the Four Seasons or um, or at the Lotus Honolulu. You can find us at Whole Foods all throughout the state, and the Barnes Noble here at Ala Moana has a copy, and um, maybe at a doctor's office or a lawyer's office too, you know, we're, we're all over the place. Or you can go to summitzine.com, which is our website. All right, well, fantastic. Thank you so very much for uh, sharing about this magazine and some of your fascinating perspectives. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. And that wraps up another issue or another edition of Power Up Hawaii. I'm Raya Salter, energy attorney, um, clean energy advocate, community outreach specialist. Um, uh, thank you so much. Mahalo and aloha.